Well, actually, Bev, it, it may just simply be a case of uh, more social media, more of these events going viral, being captured on video, because um, since tourism resumed after the pandemic restrictions wound down, around about two to three million people, could be up to four by now, we haven't seen recent statistics, uh, about two to three million have gone to Bali in the last 12 months or so. And of those, uh, authorities have deported 130 uh, visitors, short-term visitors. Now, at its peak, there were more than 6 million visitors to Bali per year before the pandemic. So it's not as though there weren't problems with bad behaviour before, but just in recent times, a lot of it's been uh, caught on camera. Also, too, uh, we have seen quite an exodus, exodus of Russians uh, getting out of Russia, setting up shop in Bali because it's a fairly easy place to travel to for them. Uh, and some of those who have uh, caught attention for the wrong reasons have been Russian Instagrammers and people posing nude at tourist and holy and traditional sites. So there's a bit of that in the mix as well. So there's been some talk about, you know, that as you say, they've they've exported, they've got rid of some of the Russian offenders. Uh, there's talk of banning some of their visas, not giving them those visas on entry. How do tourism operators feel about all of this? Because this is their lifeblood as well. Yeah, and tourism operators, Bev, have had a couple of really lean years. Almost unimaginable to think during the pandemic you had next to no visitors at all. Uh, to Bali and so they're just kind of picking up the pieces and recovering over the past 12 months. The numbers of visitors per year, they didn't immediately bounce back to what they were pre-pandemic. So even though foreigners behaving badly, it makes it into the Indonesian media, it puts pressure on authorities both in Bali but even at the national level to uh, try and look like they're controlling the problem. But when things like a tourist tax have been muted in recent months as a possible way of uh, paying for uh, police resources to deal with troublesome tourists or to slightly raise the costs of going to Bali to maybe weed out some of the sort of, you know, uh, low budget troublemakers, so to speak, there has been pushback from tourism operators in Bali who fear that it would deter the overall numbers coming to the island and of course that's their livelihood. Yeah. There's also been an issue with the use of crypto in Bali. Now that is banned. Who's trying to use it? Uh, how's this, how is this coming into operation? Well, the uh, example that local authorities made uh, is not a particularly good example. They said somebody was arrested for using cryptocurrency, but <laughs> he was using cryptocurrency to buy marijuana. So it seems the actual offence was he was caught buying drugs. But it did uh, serve as a, a, a springboard for the Bali governor, Wayan Costa, to warn all foreigners going to Bali that using cryptocurrency for transactions, for goods and services, is actually illegal in Indonesia. It's not illegal to buy and sell crypto, to speculate with it, uh, but it is not to be used as a transaction um, uh, form. And so in Bali there are some operators who are accepting crypto payments. So it's probably not super likely that if you go to Bali uh, you'd be caught up in the crosshairs of a crackdown on crypto if you did use it, but it was a timely reminder to Australians heading there that technically it is in breach of Indonesia's law. Yeah. Another issue that's been raised is the prospect of a ban on scooters and motorbikes. And as we're talking to you, we're seeing hundreds of them file past you. It is such a common form of transport, and particularly in Bali and particularly for tourists to get around. Are they seriously thinking of banning them? I don't think they seriously are thinking about it. Some of the issues around scooters that they're talking about <clears throat> are a little bit more moderate. One of the problems that keeps getting highlighted is that you're supposed to wear a helmet, but you have a lot of tourists flouting that rule. There have been a couple of um, uh, tourists or visitors caught on camera being stopped by the police and then getting in arguments with the officers, accusing the officers of trying to shake them down for a fine or a bribe, even though the foreign visitors are clearly breaching the rules in Bali. Now, we have seen the Bali governor this week uh, talk about a ban on people who are not licensed to provide scooter hire services from renting out scooters, both locals but also foreigners as well. 
All of these measures uh, seemingly are being announced or publicly discussed to show that authorities are on top of it, they are aware of it, but I don't think there are any serious moves, Bev, to actually ban the rental scooter market in Bali because that would cause all sorts of problems. Yeah, for, for so many reasons. Good to talk, Bill. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Bev. Cheers.